Hello! To win any battle, you must fight as if you are already dead. Miyamoto Musashi. Musashi was a samurai renowned as the greatest in his era, taking philosophy from Lao Tzu similarly to how Bruce Lee did, implementing the Tao or Wei sin in all things to better understand what he was doing, and in this instance, the calming of the mind and being present regardless of outcome appears to be the message. Think of it this way. When you're confronted by a man pointing his edge at you, with eyes conveying nothing but killer intent, most human beings instantly will become outcome-oriented as a result. We don't want to die, and that's a very human, very rational response, but what happens when you get heavily fixated on an outcome? You get lost in your thoughts, and your thoughts are not reality. They are a mirror, tainted by your biases, expectations, biology, reflecting an imperfect image of reality, not perfectly congruent to the moment. And for a lot of you, if you're overthinkers, you know this firsthand. Excessive thinking often leads to a construct devoid of anything tangible or practical. Evidence for a few of you, some of you not even able to walk past another human being without feeling that glint of anxiety. Even though, in truth, there was no point in giving a damn in the first place. And so, not having a perception grounded in reality may lead you to overreact, under or overestimate, and in the game of inches, up against that sharp edge, those inches may cost you your life. To be already dead eliminates the fear of death, for why would you fear what you are? Thus, the outcome is eliminated and presence, calm to the moment, remains. This is very similar to what Sun Tzu said in regards to his soldiers facing death. Throw your soldiers into positions once there is no escape and they will prefer death to flight. If they will face death, there is nothing they may not achieve. Essentially leaving your thoughts thus your fear of death and engaging the moment present with every fiber of your being, flowing to it as your soul commands in that moment. This extends far beyond combat. It is a philosophy for life. Have you ever felt that sense of anxiety in the way you carry yourself naturally? It feels so much more socially comfortable hunched over than it does to stick out your chest and chin while strolling your shoulders back. Why? There is a direct hormonal impact found in the way you carry your body and when you do stick out your chin and chest, you are legitimately producing more testosterone and priming your brain to feel more dominant, like the alpha monkey or ape amongst the tribe. And when other people see this, naturally they feel like you're a douche, questioning what entitles you to feel so dominant, when in reality, every lower tier monkey of the tribe feels that way about the dominant one. In irony, there is a sense of death whisking in the atmosphere when you carry yourself this way, because when you communicate that you are the top, that you are a winner by walking in this manner, it elicits envy from your fellow members of the tribe, and they want to kill you to attain that status for themselves. Thus we find to feel comfortable, confident, relaxed, immersing yourself in the flow of the moment. Not fearing the outcome, not fearing death is essential. A paradox in way, because how can you feel comfortable, relaxed, confident when people instinctively want your head? But the reverse is just as ironic. You feel safer, hunched over, but hormonally you change, producing less testosterone, you start thinking more, become anxious. You feel primed as a lower tier member of the tribe, quote unquote a bitch, and despite feeling like you have a safe place to be, you are not comfortable. Frequently perspiring from social pressure conforming, you to behave like every other member of the tribe. You feel safe but so insecure and so restricted. One, you feel freedom accepting death, thus not letting it concern you and the other. Shackled, restricted in a safe yet pathetic bubble. Thus we see. To live in freedom, even in the way we walk, the way we carry ourselves, accepting the idea of death, the risk of instinctively motivated judgment from those who feel inferior, is necessary. Whether you change the narrative to rejection, failure, death one way or another, this understanding applies to all facets of life. Whether you choose to live long and miserable, or short, full of authenticity, the choice is yours to make and the fear of death is the common denominator. I wish you the best on your journey, and until next time, peace.